Oh, oh no, ma'am, I'm not interested. No, the policy that I have is way better. No, I have a whole life policy. Yes, yes. Well, thanks anyway. No, no, I'm not interested. Have a blessed day. Bye. Hi, everyone. Yes, and welcome to the He Said What, 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 the He Said What show. I'm your host, your girl, sister, see the best, and this is an awesome beautiful day this is the day that the lord has made and let us rejoice hallelujah yes and be glad in it i just come to bring a word this morning to encourage our heart he says what he says i have given you a whole life policy so that you can be whole throughout your whole life he says nothing lacking nothing missing nothing broken he says this policy gives you blessed assurance he says, just as long as you know the policy and know your rights. He says, when you know your rights, you can yield and give me the right to all of your ways. He says, this private policy has an outward effect. He said, let the policy save your whole life. And he says, read the fine print. So we know that God, he loves us so much. And he said, he's given us a whole life policy. And we know in the natural, a whole life policy, it lasts your whole life. In term policy, it lasts most time in, in 20 years. So if you ain't that through in, in, within them 20 years of the policy, all the money you paid, it just goes to naught. But God is letting us know this morning that in him, he give us a whole life policy. He says that we can be whole throughout our whole life. And something that's whole is complete, is not broken. So he has come and given us, and he says, but I want you to read the fine print. You know how we got all, we got life insured, we got all these policies, and we just signed up for them and we paid, and we don't know all of our rights. And when we don't know all of our benefits, guess what? They get over on us, because they know we ain't read all them 30 pages they gave us. But just like this, the Lord has given us all this good, good word, so he wants us to read it so we will know what we have access to based on us having full coverage and having this whole life policy my first scripture that i'm going to share this morning is st luke 4 and 18. and this is jesus he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So even as I was, you know, I was reading and meditating on the scripture, but he said he's given us the this whole life policy so that we can be whole our whole life. So Jesus is letting us know, listen, honey, boo-boo, this is how you're going to be whole because as long as you accept me, like he says that he's the way telling us last week, that he's the way, the truth and the life, that he's that person. So when we accept Jesus and know that we, what we have access through, through Jesus, we could be whole. He says that he come to, um, the spirit of love because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to preach means to deliver a message. So he's preaching the gospel to the poor and the gospel is teaching or revelation about Christ. It also simply means good news. So he come in spite of how you feeling, he come to bring us some good news. So he come in on a rainy day, he come to bling, bling, bring some sun into our day. He love us so much and he want us to win. So he says that, and something that's poor, he says preach the gospel to the poor. And somebody that's poor is lacking possession of. So he says, uh-uh, let me give you this good, good news, this good message. You was lacking this, but let me give you this so you can be packing. Come on, help us, Holy Ghost, that we go from lacking to packing. Yes, yes, yes. Because we know what's in the policy. He says, he has sent me, this is Jesus, to heal the brokenhearted. And to heal means to become free from injury or disease. And it says to heal the brokenhearted. And brokenhearted is being overwhelmed with grief or disappointment. So in our life, life, we could be dealt a bad hand. We can go through situations, but God says, I want to heal. I want you to be free from, I don't care what sickness, I don't care what type of disease. I want to heal your broken heart. So I don't care if we overwhelmed with hurt and pain from our past, grief from the loss of a loved one. But he says that he wants to heal our brokenhearted our broken hearts. And he says to preach deliverance to the captive. He want to give those that um, that's um, captive. It says um, deliverance means 
um, an action of being rescued or set free. So he's giving us that message. He says to preach means to deliver a message, to give that good news, to, do, um, to bring deliverance of being rescued. You may be drowning. You may be sinking in debt, sinking in sorrow, sinking in hurt, sinking in, but he says, uh -uh, let me give you this good, good, good news so I can rescue you. Come on, Jesus, and rescue me. He come to rescue us. Yes, to deliver us. And it says deliverance to the captive. And captive is captured, not being able to leave or be free. So in it, that he want to give us this good news. So he said that the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. He don't want us to be cap captive or in bondage by any lie of the enemy. That's why he says, oh, let me give you this good news. Let me set you free. You've been locked up, locked down, tied up for you. But he want to set us free. And it says recovering of sight to the blind. And recover means the return of something that has been lost or stolen. Like I said, that enemy, that devil come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But the, Jesus said, uh-uh, let me bling, bling. Let me shine the light on you. Let me let me give you your sight back. You've been The enemy has been blinding you by this situation. Even in it, I just heard the Holy Spirit just reminding me. You know, even with us dealing with enemies and people giving us the hard time, but the Holy Spirit, he helped me in that right early. He says, what? He says, you are faced with opposition so I can bring out the best in you. I said, what? He says that you're faced with opposition so I can bring out the best in you. So in the midst of us being faced with opposition and looking like people are so against us, but God says, Tasha, sister, see the best, honey, boo boo. I'm just trying to bring out the best in you, you, and you. So just knowing that even in the midst of us faced with situations, faced that look like we've been dealt the bad hand, but God says, uh-uh, I'm just trying to bring out the best in you. He said, what? He says, our ladder going to be greater than our beginning. So in the midst of it, hold on to change is coming some good gonna come out of this he says that he know the thoughts that he has for us thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end so in spite of what it looked like right now just know that god got a expected a glorious end for us yes yes to bring out the best in us and he says to set at liberty them that are bruised god just wants us to be so free and something that's set at liberty is free. It's unrestrained. So he wants us to be so free so we can enjoy this blessed life. So that we can have an ongoing state of success. So he don't want us to be hurt. He don't want us to be wounded. He don't want us to be bruised. But he said, I want you to know. That's why he says, I want you to read this policy. So he says, so that you can have, so that you can have blessed. He said, this policy gives you blessed assurance. And assurance is a positive declaration intended to give confidence. He helping us y'all in that right early. He wants us to have blessed assurance. That positive declaration that give us that confidence. It's a promise. And guess what he told us last week that he, he keep his promise. He says two unmutable things. He don't break his promise. So it's unchangeable. So he wants us to be so anchored in this word. Hallelujah. That we know this policy that in the midst of whatever come that we have a positive declaration. You know, I was a little quick testimony. I was feeling not feeling good this morning. Well, the whole week I've been weekend. I just like I had this nagging pain like right here. But I was pressing through it. So I got on the call this morning and the Holy Spirit says, ask the sister to pray for you. So when she prayed for me, she says, I stand on 1 Peter 2 and 24. That by your stripes, I mean, she and she, she stayed on James too. She stood on two scriptures. So when the Holy Spirit, when she finished, the Holy Spirit said, that's what I want you to do. I want you to stand. He told us last week, I need you to get anchored. Hallelujah. So based on us getting anchored in his hope that we know this word and we can declare, I stand on 1 Peter 2 and 24 that by his stripes I'm healed. So he wants us to read the fine print so that we know this policy that in the midst of trials, tribulations, circumstance, situation, I declare, I stand on, make this positive declaration. Come on, help us, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you one thing. I've been, uh, oh, this spirit of sluggish, sleepy, feeling zapped tired and i just want to go to sleep and i'm like you know what so i in the midst of me even doing the show preparing and i'm like you know what let me find me a, a declaration so i found the scripture and I, I said i look back again he says no assurance i need you to make a positive declaration i said okay let me google some scripture with strength 
So I did Proverbs 31 and 25. He come to help us, y'all, in that right early. Like I said, he want us, like I said, he says, I don't want you to be a hypocrite. He said, well, you look like setting somebody else, else up for success and you living in Lola Bar. So he's giving us this good, good news so that we can be good, good people and that we all could win. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay, when I Google the scripture for script, and it gave me Proverbs 31, several of them popped up and I'm like, nah, that ain't it, that ain't it, that ain't no positive affirmation. All right, I got to find, so he says a positive declaration. Yes. So, um, I found Proverbs 31. He says, ask for it, seek for it, and you're going to find it. So, um, I found it, y'all. <laughs> Proverbs 31 and 25. And, it, and you know, this, this chapter talk about the virtuous woman. And it says, strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. So, that's okay. Strength is... Um, the property of being physical or mentally strong, it means having endurance. Uh-uh. He come to help us. So I'm like, in the midst of me be being like, that sluggish, tired spirit, no. Strength and honor it, are my clothing. So honor, it says that, um, honor is to do what you have promised or agreed to do now see in it that you know he told me last week stay on track but he said you got to have a plan to stay on track so even with me staying on track and it's like you know i've been telling myself like he's been giving me so you know helping me to be organized so it's like i gotta follow through with it so i've told myself like i got to be faithful to myself so even when when you sleep it entire guess what the things you promised yourself that you was gonna do you ain't gonna do them because you gonna go to sleep instead of fulfilling what you need to do so he helped me with that says no this is your clothing and when i looked up the difference between clothes and clothing and we know we put on clothes to cover our nakedness and all this and be, be protected but it says clothing is used to talk about a particular type of clothes whether summer clothes winter clothes you know potty clothes you know we got different clothes for different situations so it's like in it that these in the midst of me being that spirit of tightness sucker, no you better put your come on come on put your mighty garment on put your garment of strength on come on because i am clothed with strength and honor and i'm gonna do what i set out that i said i was gonna i'm gonna be faithful to myself and even in it he was like okay look at what a virtuous woman is it says a virtual woman leads her home with integrity discipline and more and it says all the virtues she practiced are aimed at making her husband life better, teaching her children, and serving God. And that's you, sister, see the best. So in order for you to do that, you got to be clothed. I'm talking to myself right now. With some strength and some honor. You got to be faithful to do what you set out to do. Because you serving God and you gonna, you trying to make your husband life better. You going to teach your children about the ways of the Lord. And you going to do this thing. Because you going to be dressed up. You going to be clothed with honor and strength. Child, woo. God, he come to help us in that right early. So if that's not, that just bless me all up in my sanctified mind. Yes, that I'm going to be clothed with strength and honor. That we're going to make these positive declarations that whatever it is. He says, read the fine print. So we reading this fine print and knowing, uh-uh. I ain't got to be having this. And then when I looked up tired, um, it says a need of sleep. And it's also me like fatigue, sleepy, drain. And y'all, that's exactly how I be feeling. But God just helped me that right early. Let me know, honey, boo boo, Tasha, you got whole life policy to help you throughout your whole life. He says, what, that we can have an ongoing state of success. So he come to help us in that right early. So whatever your it may be, you may be tired, sleepy, whatever, dealing with whatever. But find you a positive declaration. Dress yourself all up in it. And you're going to be all right. That we standing on the word of God. And he said his precepts. It's helped to change our whole attitude, behavior, and everything. Oh, he loves us so much. And he says that also the policy. He says, you know your policies, you know your rights. He says, when you know your rights, you can yield and give me the right to all of your ways. So in it, that we know that Jesus did what he did for us on the cross, that finished work. So even 1 Peter 2 and um, when I was went back to look at the affirmation that the sisters prayed over me this morning, the, the, that positive declaration, 
I begin to read the scripture, um, 2 Peter 2 and 21. And it says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judge righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For we were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. So like he says, he recovering a sight to the blind. We we was those sheep going astray. And when we go faced with situation, he reels back in. Uh-uh. I'm the bishop of your soul. Uh-uh. You better. Uh-uh. Let me heal your heart right now. Uh-uh. So he's just helping us through our whole life. He says, uh-uh. And he says, he, Jesus left us an example. So we got this policy as an example. He says, uh-uh. He did no sin. He didn't do no evil, no wicked, none against God. He says, neither was guile found in his mouth. He says when he was reviled, he reviled not again. And that's like with abusive um, language and saying all this bad stuff. <laughs> I wrote the definition down. Um, but yes, um, using like a bad language. So it's like people use bad language, but Jesus, he, uh -uh. he knew who he was. He was like, uh -uh. I ain't got to worry about that. Uh -uh. He, didn't, he didn't do it in, um, he didn't retaliate. He says, um... When he suffered, he threatened not. You know how some people can do things to us and we'd be like, mm. we'll say some threats. We'll say a whole lot of bad stuff. But God says, uh -uh. Jesus, he did none of that. So he left us this. as, And he says that if he's given us this policy so that we, uh, he says this private policy have an outward effect. So people will see, be like, oh, why she ain't get mad? Because I know that uh -uh, I'm living out this policy. I got this whole life policy. Did Jesus, uh, -uh he got me. Mm -mm. He healing my broken heart. Yeah, you just hurt my feelings, but mm -mm. Jesus got me. So he want us to be so resting in this blessing assurance of this policy, resting in this finished work, resting in, uh-uh, God got me. If God be for me, who could be against me? So it's like he, he just want us to just have this blessed assurance and know what we are entitled to, know our rights, know our policy so that we can have blessed assurance and rest in his word. He love us so much and he want us to win. Yes, and I love you so much. And thank you for joining that. He said, what, 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 what? That he said, what show? And no, for show, for show that the blessings of the Lord, they what? Make us rich and add no sorrow. See you next time on the He Said What Show. Bye-bye.